Is Ram happy? <laughs> is Ram sad? He's framing the camera. Ash is looking for a review. Hi there, welcome to Director's Debrief, episode 28. I've drank a lot of coffee. Yeah. Very busy day. There's a reason we're wearing shirts. There is. What's the um, reason, Ash? They can't hear it if they're just listening to the audio, but Sam is wearing a dashing... Oh, dashing maroon maroon thank you maroon. let's yeah. call it maroon let's maroon it maroon. yeah it sounds fancy maroon yeah. shirt yeah. um and it fits well uh extreme don't worry that's not the product review we're doing today but it's really nice thanks man you're yeah. wearing a cotton twill shirt oh yeah a white shirt a white <laughs> cotton twill um yeah it's my classic white shirts are just in right yeah do you know i can tell you something quick about twill Okay. I, I saw twill on suits. You've seen suits, right? Mm -hmm. Harvey wears twill shirts, and I thought they're really, really cool. So I like Googled what shirt does Harvey Spectre wear on suits, uh, and it was a, a cotton twill shirt. Okay. And I asked my sister for some help, and I was like, hey, I'm looking for a shirt. It's cotton twill. Yeah. And I was like, basically, what cotton twill is, and she went, no, no, I've got a fashion degree. I know what it is. <laughs> I don't even know what cotton twill is. What is it? Uh, it's just like when it's like intertwined. It's like thick, right? It's it's a thick material. Makes you like. Uh, I don't know? think this is that. Oh, this okay. is quite thin. Is it, it? It's got the look of cotton twill. Twill. Right, right. Twill. He's just smiling like yeah. these guys. Do, have do you no know cotton idea. twill? You're no. a fashion man. I figured you might, yeah. but that's okay. Okay. All right. Not a fashion podcast. Cool. What are we here for? We're here to read some funny Amazon reviews, mm -hmm. talk some stuff. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the Amazon reviews. You're yeah, taking sure. the. Uh, today. Also, what episode are we on? 28? I 28. think I said 28. Yeah, I cool, cool. Yeah, just want to confirm. Just cool. so that we know. Cool. Okay, so Amazon review yeah. for this episode 28. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> literally didn't have much time to go on, but it doesn't take too long to find a funny Amazon review yeah. um, and whatnot. And I actually went to Amazon India. Right, Excellent. Because Amazon is all over the world. It's in every major market, pretty much, except China. Um, and they, yeah, they're all over the world. But in India, they, they seem to go to town a lot more on certain reviews. Oh, Maybe yeah. they got a bit more time on their hands. I'm or excited. they just liked critique products. But I found one today. Yeah. Um, and this is for Naturalas Lean Cuts. Can I also say that I'm, I've been going through reviews on Amazon India, and they just seem to have ton more reviews on every really? product yeah like thousands and thousands like you could be a new product and you have a thousand reviews is it a population thing is it people are willing to leave maybe. reviews um no, sure. maybe yeah well here's the thing right i think it might depend on how expressive people are because we've talked about this before maybe not on the podcast but with different people about how different countries are different experts. like in germany i think and this, these are just rumors and speculation um but generally the average rating is lower not because mm. they're harsher but generally they'll only tend to leave a comment if something's bad sure without leaving yeah. so i think it varies market to market right? maybe yeah. india is just a place where you like express your feelings yeah and i, I think it falls well into that category of okay. it, okay. it only complains when something is bad <laughs> uh, my my uh, family in india can definitely vouch for that <laughs> um where they they yeah they I think with seller reviews and anything, it's expected that you will have a, a pretty poor seller review. Whereas people here, like, you know, you, you can show off about 100% reviews and yeah. so on. I mean, that's still very difficult in this market. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's a lot more cut Five seven one b banana slicer saves marriages. Yeah. You know, people are willing to... I actually think that was in America. But exactly. Yeah. But yeah, not in India. Um, so I found one. Yeah, so yep. it's, a, it's basically a fat burner yep. um, because I searched fat burner into Amazon India. Mm -hmm. And I've got one... Well, I've got a few, but I'll go for the main one because it, it's quite lengthy, but I'll go for it. All right. uh, just, be, just be wary. I haven't quite read it all in, okay. uh, to myself so I've not fully Try checked and give it. me a dramatic reading <clears throat> I will but, do okay. okay excellent it's by uh, it's by AS, AS. is the name yeah. that's you yeah <laughs> it's by it Asha it you left be. this review could be <laughs> and it was reviewed on the 8th of May okay okay journey to hell you want to know what hell looks like then use this product dose I took one tablet half an hour before exercise my journey through hell starts, possibly it was the fourth day of using this product. I had chills walking around on a treadmill. So I skipped exercise for two days, assuming that the fat burner would do its own job. Next, when I exercised again, I had feverish chills again. And the next day I got to about 102 degrees Fahrenheit. For four to five days, I was suffering for fever and it took two to three days to recover from weakness. 
To be fair, you could argue I did lose a few kilos of weight, <laughs> but that wasn't to do with the pills. It was the fact I could no longer eat due to sickness. It worked in a way. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what they're complaining about. Uh, but, uh, anyway, they. Uh, I won't review the rest because there are some... There's a bit of funny language here. Okay. Um, but yeah, essentially they go on to say how they continue to lose more weight because they had a second wave of coronavirus. Mm. Um, so they could not even eat, even with the doctor's assistance. So yes, they did lose weight, but please do not be scanned, scammed. The product does nothing. Listen, you are out there to lose weight. Yeah. You took some pills. You went through a journey through hell. I'm disappointed. This this actually, like, they actually gave a coherent review by the end of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but by the start of it, it was more of a story. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm disappointed in myself that I, uh, I didn't go through. I just, listen, if dumb ideas that work aren't dumb ideas. Yeah. You know? So if, if it, if it didn't say how it was going to make <laughs> yeah. you lose weight. Right. That's not how the, it didn't say that on the pill. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's what you thought of the uh, naturals fat burners. That's what AS did. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was what that was what I'm saying. But yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so if you want to give it a go, mm. anyone? Not that I'm saying you need it. Nah. Naturals <laughs> will, will make you sick enough to lose some weight. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's crack on with the uh, the podcast today. Yes. So what do you want to talk about, Sam? No, listen. Did you? Yes. Last week you said you had some stuff you wanted to talk about. Did we cover everything? Uh, okay, now you... <laughs> right, because I'm jogging my memory. There was a time where... Ram, you might have to edit this bit, but we were going to talk about um, e-commerce versus retail, mm -hmm. bricks and mortar retail. Did we have that discussion? Um, we did. We did. Damn it, Ram. What I, what I did want to cover was yeah. something that's on the mind at the moment is why... What is client management? Obviously, we service clients today. There are a lot of Oof. agencies popping up Oof. left, right, and center. Big topic. Um, it's something that we've always said we pride ourselves on, mm -hmm. and we try to always make sure we're we're um, exceeding ourselves. But now and then, you know, we may fall short on the odd project or something doesn't quite go to the way we feel it should. Sure. Um, so we've been through the full experience, right? It's not always rosy days at WP. Yeah. Um, as much as we we do go try and go above and beyond. So. Take me through what you what client management means to you mm -hmm. and why it matters so much to you. Okay. I think there's two aspects to this mm -hmm. and I just made them up. So okay. don't, don't, don't critique me too yeah. hard. Uh, I think it's where the information comes from. I've been trying to recap all of our latest uh, client onboardings and how we operate. Mm -hmm. I think I can break it down into what needs to come from where. One is the objective. Okay. What is the client aiming to do? And two is the delivery. And it's gonna sound pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go into it. The objective needs to come from the client. Yeah. I can't tell a client what they want. Right. The, uh, what was the second one? <laughs> the objective and the uh, execution. It was a, a yeah. synonym of execution was the word I used. Man, my mind is blank. <laughs> the execution has to come from the agency, the provider, whoever's doing it. Okay. I know that sounds pretty bog standard, um, but I think we've been in some meetings recently where we really steer the ship. Yeah. More so where the client is very clear on their expectation. These are the results that we want. And we go, here's how we're going to do it. And they're like, oh, but we really want to do X, Y, and Z. And we've had to be pretty firm. And that made me a bit anxious. I didn't like telling a client, we're not going to do what you want. We're going to get you what you want. Yeah. We're not going to tell you, well, we're not going to do exactly what you want. Okay. Because we've been there and we've done that and that's not going to get the objective that you want. Mm -hmm. That's a very hard, that's a very thin line to navigate. Sure. And I, I think I came away from that meeting feeling a little bit like uncomfortable. Like, oh, we just told them. And it was you who said it. It was like, yes, but that's what the last agency did. Mm -hmm. They told them, they gave them exactly what they asked for, but they didn't give them the results they were looking for. Yeah. And so that's what I would break down client management into. Uh, the client gives you what they want mm -hmm. and you tell them how you're going to get it. Interesting. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. Say that again. I'm breaking that down. So yeah. the client tells you what you want. What they want. What they want, sorry. Yeah. And is that kind of like a, just a top level view of where they see things in maybe 12 months time? Uh, yeah. Like, oh, for example, with Amazon, it's like, oh, I want to be in full control of my Amazon uh, yeah. account. I want to have double the sales I'm doing today. Yeah. What What does that... Stuff like that. Like, yeah. um, you know, I want double the sales. I want a 30% year-on-year increase in revenue. I want... Um, 
And it's also up to us to say whether it's feasible or not, right? Sure. We've been in this game for, what, seven plus years. We know yep. what is possible and what isn't, to mm -hmm. some extent. Can't mm -hmm. predict the future. Um, but that's the kind of things that they set out. Let's let's call them KPIs. Even yep. though some of them are softer, and by softer I mean not number specific. Sure. Um, but, like, they want to see an increase in positive reviews. They might not know exactly how many. Yeah. Um, and you can work with them to do that, but you're as the agency, you're the one who has to say, this is how we're going to do it. Right. Okay? okay. Ideas are welcome, but if we've tried those ideas and they don't work, I think you do have to speak up and sort of stand your ground a bit. Um, and that's where I think, you know, they say customers always right. And I think that's where it's only for their intentions. In terms of the execution, you should lean on your seven years of experience. You should lean on what you've been doing over the past few years rather than, um, you know, anything else. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So if I, you know, in your experience of clients, how has your client management technique evolved uh, since you first started managing clients to now? Yeah. What do you think you see differently uh, in that approach? Um, I think I started off a lot more, um, I'd say anxious, I would say. Like when I first took on a client, I remember coming to you, like just being a bit frazzled because I wasn't certain what direction to go in, what they were expecting. Sure. Uh, and I think what I've learned is it's really okay to ask. Yeah. Right? It's really okay to go, you've gave me, given me a broad goal. Let's dive in, get become a bit more specific. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you don't have the information you need, you can ask. The, the issue comes when you have to ask twice. I mm. think you shouldn't really be consistently asking, hey, what did you want again? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that the initial questions, and I've I think the initial questions have become a lot more tailored. I think I've 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 learned what more and more specifics I can get into, um, and what the right question is to ask. Sure. Um, Ollie's been a big part of that. Obviously, he's been in this game for a while, and I've mm -hmm. kind of watched to see what he does. Um, but that's that's the kind of stuff. What yeah. About you 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 deal with probably our biggest clients and our first clients. Obviously, yeah. they get the old MD privilege. Yeah. Because they've been around, they've been with us since um, what 2015. Yeah. Um, um, what do I do differently? So, or what have I? I think nothing has changed in what I think a client expects. Right. Like a, in the sense, I know what they they value is important. It's um, kind of organization, so they don't have to keep mm. asking or chasing you for different things that they've already mentioned. Yeah. You know, it's taking the relevant notes in a certain client meeting, making sure that you're on top of exactly what they're expecting, yeah. rather than you, them saying five things, you listening to two things, and then forgetting three of them, and then they have to keep saying, oh, do you remember that, and so on. So, because I know that, because I've worked with agencies in the past where I've expected the same from them, and I yeah. I see the ones that, have really proved themselves and the ones that haven't um, because it's not always about the results it's also about that relationship working so I think that's really important organization um, simply just being a pleasure to work with hopefully yeah. um, being just nice people it doesn't mean always being jolly jolly for the hell for the hell of it yeah. um, but certainly being approachable and you know timely I think that's that's super yeah. um, so that's really just from like your usual what you should be doing and the reason I, I really emphasize that is because a lot of agencies um, perform amazingly at that at the beginning mm. you know when they've got one or two clients fantastic really easy to serve yeah um, they'll make sure they do that and it's it's obvious right but as they start to take on more and they become more developed in their businesses and they suddenly have 15 clients suddenly that odd client on the side ah oh, you know if they chase us we'll do it and I, I've you know what I'll, if I'm being completely open book sometimes it does happen to us mm. where you know there are some things that slip by but as long as we're conscious of it yeah and we're aware that, okay, we may be, you know, we may have slipped up on this certain task or something. We'll, we'll get on top of it. I think that's um, really important, being self-aware as an agency. Yeah. Uh, where you may be and doing your... something about it, ultimately. If you, yeah. if you realize that you're diluting your resources too much to, to cover everything, it's time to hire. It's time yeah. to expand. Um, I wanted to ask you something. When you deal with other agencies... Mm -hmm. um, or maybe with clients, what do you prefer? Do you prefer having direct contact with each specialized department or do you prefer to go through one ma account manager okay um it varies yeah so in theory i think having one account manager is brilliant yeah um and no one likes to be passed around like oh sorry that's not my department you've got to speak to xyz yeah i do not mind working with different people from different areas mm -hmm. as long as it's clear 
and no one keeps passing the buck like oh sorry that's not my yeah. bit i won't go on so for example say we've got two of you uh, three three of you in the room right one of you's involved in ops one of you's involved in accounts and finance and one of them's involved in marketing and business development right yeah. what i find tough is so as a as a, a kind of someone who works with agents or has worked, worked with them in the past I don't mind going to marketing and saying this, but I may have a conversation with them about something that went wrong in operations, right? Mm. Like, oh, our stock didn't arrive on time or our purchase order wasn't completely fulfilled. If that marketing person then goes, oh, you know, sorry, that's not my my place. You've got to go speak to, speak to Sam. You know, yeah. that's an operational thing. That's where I do get a bit frustrated. You know, I have no issue being being passed around, but really when, when you deal with one person, even if it's not your domain, right, yeah. and you're just ops, you should take responsibility for the company rather than that right. client having to chase. What do, what do you think? That? that renders my question mute. Yes, I yeah. was going to ask, um, to what extent is it that person's responsibility? And I think you answered that by, it's their responsibility to represent the company. Yeah. Of uh, Instead of like, oh, you go speak to X. It's just like, I- I'll check. I'll check yeah. with X and I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, I, I only ask this because we seem to have a bit of a different approach towards different clients. With some clients, we have... Um, you know, one port of contact. Um, so for like one particular client I've, I've got in mind, I'm the main port of contact. You and Ollie are available. You, you show up to most of the meetings yeah. and stuff. Um, but a lot of the stuff gets channeled through me and there's a lot of clients that are channeled through you. But there's also some clients that we work with that have access to the broader stretch of the company that can speak to like Rini in accounts and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was kind of just wondering whether that's, that's sustainable or whether we should change the way we operate. Um, and we kind of just thought I'd get your take on it live on air. Yeah. But like for us to pick a side, because like I said, we do both at the mm-hmm. moment. I think I like having one port of contact because it alleviates that issue, but it comes at the cost of speed, right? Yeah. Unless that account manager's quick, right? Yeah. I'll always try to reply to emails within reason as like as soon as I get them. Um, you and me both have notifications galore on our phones and laptops. Yeah. Both read, read a, read, are reading a book about how we should not have that. Yeah. But right now, it means great client yeah. relations. It is part of the job as yeah. well, right? The client management uh, service. Yeah. So it, let me just put this. So you're, you're saying, do you think, because we, yeah, like you say, we do both, right? Um, do you think it's best to have just one account manager who then everything goes through them? Yeah. So say it's a financial query, it'll go through them to our finance team. Yes. Or if it's an operational thing, it'll go through them to the ops team. Yeah, for one reason. Um, And it's kind of related to accountability, but it's also to do with when you have the dispersed approach, as in the client can reach out to finance, the client can reach out to ops themselves, the responsibility that everything is happening on track lands on the client. Yeah. Right there, essentially, they take on the client becomes the project manager. Yeah. When you have one account manager, that account manager is the project manager. Yeah. Right. So if finance starts falling behind, it's up to the client to chase finance to go mm. what's going on. Whereas if there's one account manager managing all of the accounts, um, or sorry, managing that account start to finish, they should realistically be keeping track of stuff. Yeah. And if something's fallen behind, they could go chase the account manager, uh, the uh, finance team then go I'm really throwing shade Rinny's great at accounts yeah. but like you can go back yeah. to, to the client and go hey I already chased this for you X, Y, Z better experience yeah it's, it's an interesting one and um, I think the approach that's really nice is when there is new projects that need to start so say when you're working with a, a client right and they have a new thing that they want to take on like oh we would like you to take on this new brand or this new product range sorry two seconds is that still recording mm-hmm. you sure Okay, do you want to just pause it and, and start recording again? Just because it's been over 20 minutes. And I'm... Right. To go to them and then they can uh, kind of dis- distribute the work accordingly and come up with it. A bit like a, yeah, a bit of a project manager, a product manager and so yeah. on. That makes sense. What I do like, and this is, int- I'm not sure what your opinion on this, is like a, a, uh, a bit of a one-way system. Mm. Uh, sorry, so it's one way that way. So when it's a new project, it goes from the client to the project manager. Yeah. But on the way back, the uh, relevant okay. team members can reach out to the client directly yeah. to have that direct communication because say there is a product launch right and that i'm the account manager and i'm not going to be particularly involved in the new product launch but they tell me they inform me mm. then i inform the team the marketing team whoever it is in in our in our team about that then they can reach out to the client and have that direct communication mm. on that exact project yeah but when there's a new thing going on that comes back to me. And I'm still CC'd into all emails. I'm still keeping a track of progress. Yeah, yeah. I don't just let it just um, kind of go away, which yeah. also 
is really important and a lot of people won't take that seriously enough. Yeah. But um, I think it's really important to just let that communication tra- uh, channel go because otherwise there's a lot uh, lost in translation potentially. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, there, there's positives to both. What's your opinion on that? I like the one-way system. It's kind of cool. Okay. But then again, I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a moth to a flame when it comes to like new things. Like I don't think I've seen any of our partners necessarily do that. Like the companies that we work closely with. I don't know if any clients do that, I guess. Um, almost. There is usually somebody in charge of a project. Mm. Um, but the, the, the things around it, they'll go, I'll leave it up to this person to reach out to you. Um, but yeah, I, I, when it comes to like, I don't know if anyone's tried that before. I'm like, let's go, let's try. Yeah. It. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's there's a bit of an issue though because then when the it's how do you communicate that to the client so that they know that's the structure. Yeah. Because if they're I don't know they could be working with you on a marketing thing or an operational thing, right? Yeah. Uh, because it's come via me and it's been introduced to you and you've been working with them on that particular project. CC'd me in. Mm-hmm. How. Do they then know, okay, I've got this other product launch. Do I speak to Sam about this or do I speak mm. to Ash about this? Where, wh- how, what is the clarity? Or is it just me checking in with them continuously on that? See, now you lost me. Mm. Now you lost me from that idea. I want to go back to single account manager. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a million ways to skin a cat, I suppose. You, um, you've probably dealt with clients the longest. How have you evolved over time? Um, I think from a personal point of view, I've... Uh, I believe I've become less micromanaging. Yeah. Um, and I think that's as we've developed our team and the skill set we have in the team, I have trust that people do the job better than I can mm. and understand it better than I can in certain areas. So, of course, um, I've developed far more there and that's really helped the client management overall because then I don't need to, you know, at the end of the day, I could, I personally could only take on so much, so many tasks. Yeah, and yeah. What, you know, as typical clients uh, can can be, um, they can give you 10 to 15 tasks all in one day and then not speak to you for a couple of weeks. So yeah. all of the work comes in one go. Yeah. Um, so it's how you dis- distribute that and so on. I think I've developed in terms of, I believe my organization has got a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, it's a regular conversation we have about how can we improve this so that we don't let anything slide yeah. um, and we're on top of our, our game. Um, what I I will say is I think I've become a more aware of when a client is happy or unhappy. Interesting. Um, How? Because of no. Uh, so I was going to say I think I've become more aware, yeah. but I've chosen <clears throat> to not always take it so personally. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, what I mean is, so we could be in a client meeting, and I think I. I and we all do to a certain extent. We pick up on signals mm. where something's not going right. But it's make sure you don't read into it too much yeah. and you appreciate, okay, at the end of the day, whether a client had a, uh, someone in, in the team may have had an off day or may not have taken uh, kindly to the way you may have approached a certain subject. Mm. What's their one number one goal here? Yeah. I, I've misread those situations. I've taken it, not personally, but I've like got so caught up in my head it's sure. it's not easy no not at all um but and, yeah and it's like personal life right like yeah. uh, when you meet your friends yeah. and so on it's so easy but the thing in in personal in your own social life it's hard to know what someone's goal is or what mm. someone's ambition is right like you could have said something wrong to your friend or so on but it's hard to know what what they want um but when it comes to clients majority of them 99 percent are just looking at one thing, success, or whatever their target is, you make it work for them. So yes, maybe something came across a bit rash, but you can always resolve it, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, bring them the results and everything else is forgotten. Show you are there and you're determined. I have some questions for you. Mm-hmm. You are very related to this and you've just made me think of it. You're very diplomatic to the point where it's a bit of a running joke now that you should have probably <laughs> gotten into politics. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you find yourself equally or similarly uh, diplomatic amongst your friends? Yes. Uh, you I'm, do? And my personal life, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you find that hinders your ability to express certain opinions? Yes. Do you regret not expressing them or are you okay with this? Because nobody asks that. Everyone's just like, oh, you're sheltering yourself, for, you're sheltering who you are or whatever. But they don't ask if, like, are you happy with that? Because it might be the case. Would you rather be... Yeah, are you happy with the with? Yeah, I I think it depends. So I've never been one to hold back from my opinion if I really believe in it. It's mm. not like I could always keep things suppressed. You know, if yeah. I'm feeling something and I think it can 
be a benefit to someone in yeah. the longer term, right? Like I could say, Sam, you know, you really need to trim your beard or something like that. <laughs> this again? We go back to that. What was it? It was like a four year, four four year years joke. ago. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt you. Quick context. Ash and I sat in this very room back when we were a much smaller company, just me and him working away. Hey, you know the story? No? About 15, 20 minutes of just silence work, just powering through. No music, now no Now Sam's going to think about this. Like, we're why in, did Ash bring it up mate, again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His I'm, beard I'm, is looking I'm, smashing, by the way. Okay, thanks, man, because I've got family dinner. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we're, like, we just sat here in flow mode, like, working. All you can hear is, like, tapping away at the keyboard. And I just hear from, like, the side, just, you need to trim your beard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Dude, <laughs> where did that come from? Yeah, maybe maybe my diplomatic skills so, hadn't quite yeah, you developed. You know what? There. I take it back. You're not diplomatic, right? No, no. I, you don't I, I don't know where that came from. I think I, I think I forgot the whole context around that when I said it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, Sam, did you shave your beard today? <laughs> maybe you should. Yeah, you're not diplomatic. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I, I think with my personal opinion, I, I do say it as it is most of the time. Yeah. But what maybe that diplomatic side of me does is it allows me to think about things in a bigger picture. So, okay, do I really want to say this to a client right now? Or I say client, uh, do I really want to say this to my friend now? Am I, is it really going to be a benefit to them or am I doing it just to say it for the hell of it? Um, But if I think actually, you know what, they need to be told that, you know, they're just jumping from job to job to job or, (laughs) you know, they, uh, they need to get out of that relationship or so on. I won't be afraid <laughs> to just say it yeah. um, because I think it could be a benefit to them, not me, yeah. to them. And yeah, sometimes it does make me look like a bad guy. So I don't know. I think I have a filter maybe mm. uh, or I'm de- developing more of a filter, but I'm trying to make sure it doesn't go too far. Yeah. Uh, how about yourself? Do you, you're, I would, I would class yourself, you, you, yeah. um, as someone who's, who's certainly, um, gone towards that as well. Yeah, you. Yeah. Are you not saying yourself because of what I said earlier? Yeah, are you, you. How many times have you seen me do that this week? It, it happens uh, every day now. I'm like, yeah. Is you right or is yourself? Right? Uh, listen, do you 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 do yourself? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you do you, man. If you feel like that's the right thing, you you say. I don't know what the right thing is. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, I just told Ash that uh, he said yourself in a in a presentation. And I, I, you know, we always give each other feedback afterwards. And um, I was in a over the phone interview once for a sales position and we did a, uh, like a run through. And uh, he says, one, you sound like an 80s radio window salesman. Like, hi there, 9.99 down to 49.99. Like, (laughs) that's what I sounded like over the phone, apparently. Um, But he said, don't say the word yourself. And I, I passed that on to Ash. And now, now you're, now you're overly conscious about yeah, it. Yeah. And now I, I'm doing, I'm, I'm conscious about it in situations where I don't need to be conscious. Yeah. But, yeah, um, it's what happens, Sam. It's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, and I, I hate that I use that, that word, but when Ram says, I say like too much or like I um too much. So I just said um and like in the sentence that, yeah. where I'm describing this issue. And now I, I think about it all the time. Thanks, man. You made me real self-conscious about my flaws. So, so you're just quickly wrapping up on this whole yeah. client management thing. Your role obviously was in operations more before. And yes. now you're much more an account director and um, kind of leading that whole area. Yeah. Um, with with some operational. Um, yeah, I can't let go of my baby then. just like that. But what um, what's changed? Because I've seen a, a huge change in you. And I'm still trying Ooh, to figure out sure. internally. Um, from, I mean, it's not like it's, it's not like you started off in a, in a poor position, right? Yeah. Uh, You know, you were in a very strong position. You obviously knew how to deal with people. You were dealing with clients already, um, ad hoc kind of thing, but taking that to a full-time gig, uh, so we should say it, um, what, how do you think you've developed? Um, yeah, I mean, I was always involved in, if you, if we cut back to maybe 10, 15 episodes ago on the podcast, we talked about um, the the privileged position that I get to sit on this fence where I get to look at your side that you handle, which is a lot of, you know, very client intensive and, and business development and on the other side of things, which was ops. Mm. I think I've just, you, you, uh, I, I fell over the fence one side to, to deal more with, with clients. So I was always at the meetings, but I was always there from an operations perspective. Mm. And I think that's what's changed the most. I'm no longer there to advise on operations. You know, if you look at some of the questions that I was asking in these meetings, I was asking, um, you know, if we're doing fulfillment, how many, um, 
you know, what kind of shipments are we going to expect? Yeah. Pallet, container, what is the shelf life of the products? How does the batch coding work? That was kind of what my role centered around. I was advising and, and inquiring from an operations standpoint, um, as well as some like digital operations. It's not all just like warehouse operations yeah. and stuff. Um, whereas now it's a lot more centered around that. And I think we're in a very good position operationally. We've got some great people um, doing some great work in that department that it now kind of needs my oversight and nudging rather than my direct management. Sure. And I think I found myself with quite, quite a bit of free time and you came up to me and you just, it was around the time where you were incredibly busy. I think I was less busy, but we just signed on a really big deal. Mm -hmm. And you said, I need you to handle this the way you handle and you said the client's name. And you asked if I was up for it. And I said, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go. I think followed by 20 minutes of like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's one of those things like anything in life where you start off rusty. I think Ed Sheeran has this about songwriting, right? You never put the mug under the sink and pour yourself a thing. You let it run for a while. You get some of the gunk out and mm. then you start pouring yourself a glass of water. I think it was one of those where... Um, in the beginning, I was worried. I didn't know how to manage all of these things. And I was like, this is, I, I've managed multiple tasks at once before when sure. I was in operations. I just need to adjust my methods to deal with clients too. Um, and once, you know, the gunk had filtered out the water streams, I think things started to flow a little bit more. And I think I have a lot more experience now of managing a client than I do onboarding a client. So I think the next time we go to onboard a client the size of this one, there might be some jitters and I'm okay with that. Um, but I think I've just become a lot more at peace because I've done the process once. Sure. Um, and I'm better at it, but it is just a case of like first time jitters. Mm. And I think the next time I go in, but that's the thing I keep referring to is that I've always been a part of the process. Uh, and now I, I lead the process a little bit more. Yeah. So you were always involved. You knew what was expected of these yeah. clients and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I always saw what you and Ollie do, right? Um, I always kind of saw the questions you guys asked. Um, it's been a big push for me to see how comfortable you guys are presenting. Um, so that's kind of been, it's, it's not necessarily maybe made me better at presenting, but it's pushed me. It's like when you're in, if you go to, I genuinely believe this, if you go to Alton Towers by yourself mm. and you're afraid of roller coasters, you're not getting on any rides. But if you go with your friends and a bunch of your friends go, it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to be the person who doesn't. Yeah. And right. so when we do like webinars, which we have on later today, or presentations, or jumping on a Zoom call with, let's say, we always do a lot of preparation, but sometimes there isn't time. They're like, let's jump on in mm. 20 minutes and, and have a call. Before that used to scare me. Yeah. But now I'm like, let's just see what they I want. So. Yeah, exactly. No, I love that. And where where do you see your, your kind of account management going? How, how would you like to improve? Not mm. necessarily picking out where you feel you're falling short yet, but yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Um, confidence in, uh, sorry, more trust in the process. Mm. And it all comes back to my two points. I think from learning from you and Ollie, I, I, I've gotten pretty good at finding out what the client's objective is. And sometimes the client doesn't necessarily know exactly, but you can guide them down certain paths. Um, I think I've learned quite a bit from you guys. There's still more to learn. But the main thing is the second part in the execution. Um, you know, now when I'm, I think you've been through this process. I think you're just coming out the other end. Mm. But when you're pitching a solution to their potential problems, um, I've seen it work before, but... I don't know if I hesitate or if th there's something in my mind of like, what if it doesn't work? Sure. There's always that hesitation. And the only thing that brings me peace is like, well, we'll try something else if yeah. it doesn't. But so far, I've never had to fall back on that. So I, I, I think the main thing I need is more trust in the process. Something goes, if somebody comes to me with a problem, I need to just be able to go, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah. Let's do this. I and I think because I've, I've, I haven't managed that many clients, um, Maybe that will come. I'm hoping that comes with time. Yeah, it probably already has happened without you realizing. Maybe. I think that moment doesn't happen. Like, it's not like, bam, I know. Mm. There'll be a realization moment, maybe. Yeah. But I think I don't think you're too far away if, you, if you're not already there anyway. I hope uh, so. Um, because, yeah, it, it, it's just like you say, multitude of different experiences, how you understand it, that yeah, pressure, yeah. and then crack on. Yeah, yeah, there's always just adding context. I always think this when... Somebody said this about Martin Scorsese. Who was it? Uh, Jonah Hill said mm -hmm. this about Martin Scorsese. They asked him, who, who's the best director you've ever worked with? And he goes, Scorsese, immediately. And he goes, how? And he goes, directing is essentially problem solving. And Scorsese can find the perfect solution in 30 seconds or less every single time. Yeah. And the only way he can do that is by drawing on the years of context. I don't think Scorsese at film school, I don't know if he went to film school, but like in his early days, 
I think it took him 30 minutes mm. to fix those problems, but he really honed in on fixing them. And so I think right now my, my roster or my Rolodex of experience is finite. And I think I need more more time and I need more problems to fix yep. and I'll have more experience to draw on. But I'm, yeah. I'm confident that will come with time. Definitely. And I think that's us as a wider agency as well and mm. what we do that, you know, we're whilst we've been in the business only seven years now, mm. it's like as we develop and we, the more kind of, uh, the more problems we have to solve on yeah. a daily basis, which we go through, which are, you know, horrible at the time, you know, yeah. trying to figure out something new, figuring it all out. But when we come through and we've found that solution, how many times can we replicate that for our other clients and, and go in and say, yeah, we know exactly what needs to be done yeah, here yeah. and so on. So yeah, it's, it's, it's experience that we need as a, as an organization. Yeah, overall. for sure. Yeah. Um, this is a really, really interesting conversation, man. Yeah. Definitely. I, did you think it was interesting? I saw you doze off a few times. <laughs> Um, but I really, really have to pee, and we have a webinar to prepare for. We, we have do. a new website to launch. Yep. So you want to wrap up? Yeah, the show? absolutely. Thanks for listening to episode twenty-eight. Um, I don't know what we call the title of the podcast, but we'll, we'll Ram something. comes up with some creative yeah, stuff. some creative stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was great to talk about clients, management, and just where we're going as agency. So, yeah. brilliant stuff. And stay tuned. Um, if you like this, want to hear more want to get involved want to be a guest as well we're now taking a lot more guests on um, as you'll see in the coming yeah. weeks uh, which I'm really excited about as well um, please do comment do get in touch uh, send us a DM on Insta wherever you are uh, and we'd love to get in touch and, and hopefully shoot some cool stuff take it easy